You're listening to Thursday Night Tailgate with Chris Mascaro and Bob Lazeri, where NFL legends live on. Back to you, boys. It's him. He's alive. All right, now back with us here on Thursday Night Tailgate is uh, former Patriots Pro Bowl running back Tony Collins to help us go through our five-star picks of this week. Hey, Tony, you should be feeling good, my friend, but uh, i gotta, I got to be honest with you. My blood, pr- my blood pressure hasn't come down since Sunday. <laughs> so easy, Tony. How you, how you doing, Chris? Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, Tony. What, what, what a catch. That, that was a great catch, though, man. i got to give it to him. <laughs> Yeah, it was a great catch, and it was a touchdown, and, and the Steelers win that game. That's that's what happened. That's not what's in the record book, but that's what happened. Oh, uh, man, I tell you, they need to change that rule, man. It's a, it's a crazy, yeah, they do. It's a crazy rule. It's a rule, but they need to change it. I, I really mm-hmm. felt bad for the Steelers. I really did. Yeah, I appreciate you, Tony. <laughs> Right, so let's review a little bit last week. And, uh, uh, again, uh, none of us had a stellar week, but Bob, again, the only guy to finish over 500. Bob goes 3-2. and two. Tony, you and I go 2-3, and three, so we keep losing more ground to Bob. With it. So it's not looking good for us. Again, Bob 3-2, and no, two, you and I 2-3. and three. For the season now, Bob is 44-21. Uh, and 21. I'm 39-26. and 26. And, Tony, you keep inching closer to me. You're 37-28. and 28. So, uh we got a long way to go, and there aren't a whole lot of weeks to get there. But we got another week, or maybe we get lucky. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Our first game this week is going to be the 6-8 and eight Dolphins going to the 8-6 and six Chiefs. The Chiefs are a 10.5-point home favorite, which just seems like a lot to me for a Dolphins team uh, that beat the Patriots, oh, by the way, a couple of weeks ago. Over-under is 43.5. So, Tony, do you think the Dolphins have, the, have a shot here? Because it sure doesn't look like Vegas gives them any shot to win this game. I'm going to go with Vegas, man. Dolphins don't have a chance to beat the Chiefs right now. Chiefs, you know, I think the Chiefs right now, um, last couple of weeks, they've been playing pretty good, and, and they still got a lot left on the line. You know, I mean, you know, they're they're going to win their division, and, and I don't even know if the Dolphins can make the playoffs. They're going to play hard. They're going to be a, a, a spoiler, probably try to be a spoiler, but uh, no way they beat Kansas City this week. So I'm going Kansas City and I think this is going to be one of those blowout games. I think Kansas City is going to, going to beat them up pretty bad. Let's go 37-14, to 14, Kansas City. Uh, I had an early Tony Collins blowout special of the week. Bob, what do you think? I totally agree with Tony. That was going to be my Tony Collins blowout special of the week. <laughs> you know, I had it 38-10. to 10, And, uh, yeah, a team like Miami, guys, I can't take a team serious, again, that's given up um, – you know, 90 to 100 points more than they've scored. They can't score with Kansas City. Going into that place, uh, rabid environment, uh, they don't play well on the road. And, you know, Kansas City is in Kansas City, and they have a lot to play for. Yeah, so, again, 38-10, Kansas City. Yeah, and I agree with you guys. You know, the, the Chiefs have found a little something just in time to save their season. They got a huge win, you know, last week over the, over the Chargers and uh, the week before that over the Raiders. So t- two huge division wins in the last two games. Kareem Hunt is back on track, 155 yards rushing and a touchdown on the ground, plus a receiving touchdown as well last week. Alex Smith was Alex Smith, 231 yards, a couple of touchdowns against the Chargers. Tyreek Hill, boy, that guy's tough to defend, 88 yards and a touchdown last week. The, and the big difference for the Chiefs, you know, was their defense. They intercepted Rivers three times. Now, on the opposite side, fellas, you know, the Dolphins lost a tough one to the Bills last week after, uh, you know, blowing out uh, Denver a couple of weeks ago and then beating the Patriots two weeks ago. So, you know, the thing for the Dolphins is, you know, Jay Cutler, can he stay away from throwing picks? He threw three last week. Uh, So, you know, that sort of ends the Dolphins' chances right there. And for the season, 18 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. And I think that's where the Dolphins lose. I don't have any faith that Cutler won't throw the game away again this week. So I'm with you guys. I got the Chiefs as well. Not, not quite as big a blowout, but I got them 30, uh, 30 to 17. Our second game is the 8-6 and six Bills going to Tony's what should be 10-4 and four Patriots. They're 11-3. and three. should be 10-4. and four. <laughs> Patriots are an 11.5-point home favorite. The over-under is 47. So, Tony... Can your boys avoid a letdown, you know, with, uh, you know, a heavy conscience that they've got to be carrying around with them with that stolen win? Can they, uh, can they manage to beat the Bills? I think so. Um, I think we're, we're getting a little healthy now. Offensive line, uh, Grant came back. I tell you what, 
without Gronk last week, there's no way we we would have beat the Steelers. So um, I think I think the Patriots what what they what they always usually try to do is these last few games is get getting ready for the playoff, getting that momentum going. So got to go with my Patriots, of course. Um, I, you know, it could be one of those games where the Patriots just just wipe the Buffalo Bills out. Even even though Buffalo has a chance to make the playoffs. It's a must win for them, but there's no way they're going to come in and beat beat my Patriots in New England. So we're going to go we're going to go 27 to 14 New England. All right, Bob, what do you think? Yeah, I like I like an even bigger score than that. I think New England, you know, they they were so battle tested last week, came came out of it barely. But uh, again, uh, they have that one more game in them that will uh, will definitely cement. Uh, their place in the postseason, and that's going to be this week. So um, you know they're 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 pro- they're just as good as a road team as home, but they are in New England. Uh, elements might be, from what I'm hearing, an issue here. But uh, with Gronkowski, like Tony said, he's he, he'll always get MVP votes because you take him out of the lineup, they're a different team. But uh, yeah, New England's going to win this game uh, about 34-20. All right. And guys, you know, for me, the Bills are just—they're a hard team to figure out. They started the season five and two, and you know, I thought for a minute, hey, maybe they, these guys can be a contender. Then they lose three in a row, and then you say, wow, they're the same old Bills. Well, now they've won two in a row, and they're the sixth seed in the AFC right now. They lost to the Patriots three weeks ago, but you know, it was a tighter game than the score. I mean, it was nine three at half there, and you know, they sacked Brady three times in that game. Brady throws a pick. They, you know. They ran on the Bills and had some success in that game, 191 yards between Deion Lewis and, and uh, Rex Burkhead, who also ran for two touchdowns. But last week against the Dolphins, the Bills held Kenyon Drake to 78 yards rushing, the same Kenyon Drake who ran for 114 yards against the Patriots. The Bills also you know, are the team that picked off Jay Cutler three times, the same Jay Cutler who threw three touchdown passes in the win against the Patriots. But, you know, I mean, look, I, I don't think the Bills are going to win this game. But I don't think it's, it's going to be a runaway like Vegas seems to, to think and uh, that 11.5-point spread. So I, I think the Patriots win, but I think the Bills are going to give them a tough time. I'll take the Pats 24-20. We've got our next guest, Orlandis Gary, hanging on the line. We'll get to Orlandis here in just a minute. Our third game this week is the 9-5 and five Falcons going to the 10-4 and four Saints. The Saints are a six-point home favorite, and the over-under is 52 and a half. So, Tony, the AFC South still has three teams in the race for the division title with the Saints, Panthers, and, uh, and Falcons. The Saints and Panthers tied at the top. Falcons are a game back. The Falcons beat the Saints a couple of weeks ago, and they play the Panthers next week. So, you know, if uh, the Falcons were to lose, they'd be in a dogfight for that last playoff spot. So I think they're going to be a hungry team. What do you think? Who wins this game? It's, it's got probably the best game of, of the week uh, with those two teams playing. Uh, man, it, it, it's going to be a tough one. I, I see them going back and forth. Uh, with the both the both teams got great quarterbacks, they got great receivers. Um, but I just feel that the Saints give them. I'm just going to give them that home field advantage, they, and they pull it out. Last second field goal, 27, 27 24. We're going to go with the Saints. All right, Bob. Who, who do you think wins here? It's hard for me to go against the Saints at home late in the season uh, with Breeze playing at a very high level. Both uh, it's beginning to be a good rival rivalry, guys, and their defenses are basically identical. Identical if you look at points against. So uh, I, I just think the New Orleans got a little better offense at this point. They're home, and Breeze uh, is continuing to do what he does. So I think Tony's right. They're they're going to cement their place in the playoffs and win pretty close game. I'm going to go 30-24 New Orleans. All right. So, guys, you, know, you look over, the Saints have won six in a row at home this season, and they've won those games by an average margin of 11 points. So they're playing awfully well at home, as you would expect that they would. They're also the first team to have two running backs named to the Pro Bowl since uh, Jim Otis and Terry Metcalf of the Cardinals back in 1975. Now, the Falcons' defense, you know, they're ninth against the run, so, you know, they do a pretty good job against the run. They're 12th against the pass, so not bad there either. The Saints' weakness is their run defense. They're 18th. The Falcons ran for 132 yards in the last game, and Devontae Freeman had 91 and a touchdown the last time that they played, and 126 yards and a touchdown Monday night against Tampa Bay, so he's heating up. So I think you're going to see a lot more of that. Plus, I think in their last matchup, Matt Ryan 
threw three interceptions, which was, you know, the reason why it was a close game. Falcons won last time, one by three. And you know what? I'm going to go the opposite way, fellas. I think the Falcons go on the road to New Orleans. I think that they march out a winner. I'm going with the Falcons in a, uh, in a pretty high-scoring game like you guys had. I think they win 27-24. Our fourth game is the 8 and 6 Seahawks going to the 8 and 6 Cowboys. The Cowboys are a 5 point favorite. The over under is 47 and a half. Tony, Seattle got embarrassed last week at home against the Rams, blown out 42 to 7, their worst loss of the Pete Carroll era. You know, then they've got they got infighting now with a couple of their defensive players. The Cowboys get Ezekiel Elliott back. So, how do you see this one unfolding? Just really not the same defense in Seattle anymore. They they've got so many injuries, and the Cowboys got Ezekiel coming back. They're fighting for their lives to get in the playoffs. They got to have, they got to win out, and they got, they need some help. Uh, you know, with Ezekiel Zeke, Zeke, coming back, man, I just see uh, the Cowboys winning this, and I, I see them winning it big too. I see them winning it thirty-seven to fourteen, Cowboys. Wow, another Tony Collins blowout special. Two this week, Bob. Is Tony right? Uh, you know, I'm I'm about to put Seattle in that same category with Arizona, Chris. You and I have them in the stock down <laughs> category. After that debacle, that was a debacle last week against the Rams. Um, I can't take them serious anymore. And, and it's it's amazing at this point of the time that Seattle, there's so many more better defenses in the league than them. It's hard to believe that's the case, but it is. And with Elliott coming back, having a lot to prove, Dallas still right there in a the playoff hunt. Uh, I'm going to say Dallas uh, gets by this team 31-17. All right. So to both of your points, you know, with Zeke back with the Cowboys, I, I, I agree they're a different team. I think Seattle – the Seahawks are shell shocked after last week's game. I think they're starting to point fingers, you know, on top of, you know, having to deal with, you know, injuries along that defensive line. You know, Todd Gurley rushed for 152 yards and three touchdowns in that game. Who would have guessed a Seattle defense would give up that? And uh, so, uh, you know, even though Zeke is, you know, they, they you know, say he's in, in great shape coming back and, you know, stayed, you know, stayed in tip top shape while he was away, but, you know, he's not in football shape. He probably isn't going to get, you know, going to need to get, you know, hit again a few times to get himself going. But uh, yeah, I, I like the Cowboys too, guys. I think they, I think they run all over Seattle as well. Uh, I think it's going to be a little closer than the two of you have it, but I got the Cowboys winning this game 27 to 20. And our last game of the week is uh, what should be my 12 and two Steelers. They're 11 and three, but should be 12 and two. <laughs> Going to the four and ten Texans on Christmas Day in a rare Monday afternoon, Monday afternoon game. Steelers are a nine point road favorite. The over under is forty five. Tony, the question here is, can my boys, you know, kind of put the the whole non catch situation in the Patriots game behind them and get focused to win this game? They got a veteran team, man. So I I, I look at the Steelers right now. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're they're going to get over this loss. They have to get over this loss. Only only problem without Antonio Brown, it's, it's going to be not tough for them. Losing Antonio Brown, you, 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 you just can't replace that guy. Uh, but, you know, with the running attack that they have, and the Texans, I don't even think they got a chance uh, to beat the Steelers right now. I got another blowout, man. I'm I'm going 42 to 7 Steelers. Wow. Holy cow. <laughs> Tony, all kinds of blowouts. Every game's a blowout this week for Tony. <laughs> My goodness, Bob, what do you think? Uh, I, I, I'm with Tony again. I, I just Houston. It's amazing. I know JJ Watt, and this is why he's an MVP. You know, out for the season, and they and they've turned in from possibly the best defense going into the season to the worst. And that's incredible when one guy can do something like that. I know it's a combination of things, but they've given up almost 400 points, which is outrageous. So Steelers just showing up are going to put up 30. And uh, a team like Houston, I mean, they're going nowhere. Steelers are a little perturbed. Um, yeah, by default, uh, Steelers are going to go in there. How about 38-20? All right, well, from both of your lips to God's ears. Yeah, I think I think the Steelers are going to be focused. I think they're going to be, you know, determined to come out and win these final two games and get themselves, Tony, to your earlier point about the Patriots, you know, try to get some momentum back 
heading into the postseason. I think the defense does pick it up. I think, you know, with the other wide receivers having to step up, to your point, Tony, about Antonio Brown and his absence, but I think Ben, you know, spreads up all around. I think we see a lot of Juju Smith-Schuster. I think we see more of Martavis Bryant, and I think Texans get a whole lar- large dose of, uh, of Le'Veon Bell. So I think the Steelers go in, I, I, I'm, you know, and right around the same as you, Bob. I think they, they blow doors. I think they win this game 34-17. to Tony, before we let you go, remind our listeners about the great things that you do to help kids get off to college. TonyCollinsFoundation.org, helping kids go off to college, uh, go to that website, make donations. Every book that we sell goes into helping a kid go off to college. Tony, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to you and your family. Amen. Make it a, a merry one and a very safe one. We look forward to uh, catching up with you on the other side of New Year's. No show next week, so we, uh, we look forward to catching up with you in, uh, in 2018. Merry Christmas, guys, and a happy New Year to you. Thank you, Tony. Same to you, Tony. That is uh, former Patriots Pro Bowl running back Tony Collins and our five-star picks of the week. We've got our next guest, Orlando Scary, hanging on the line. We're going to get to Orlando on the other side of this quick station break.